Good morning and welcome to the regular public meeting of the Henry County Board of Commissioners for 9 a.m. Monday, November 19, 2012. At this time, I'd like to call the meeting to order and ask for an acceptance of the agenda. So moved. Motion by Mr. Stamey, second by Mr. Bowman. All in favor? Motion carries 4-0. The first item on the agenda is a presentation regarding the Henry County Stormwater Utility, which is exhibit num number one in the book, and our presenter is Butch Oliver, our Stormwater Director. Good morning. Good morning, Chairman, Commissioners. Um, stormwater has been in existence now about five or six years, and we needed to review our ordinance to make sure that everything's in compliance and that we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. So we went out and contracted a company, Ecological Solutions, to do that for us. And today, Mr. Ron Fenner from Ecological is here to do a PowerPoint presentation and bring you up to speed on, you know, what we've done with the ordinance and what few little changes we might need to look at changing. And, but other than that, everything looks good. So at this time, I'll give you Mr. Ron Felder. Good morning. Uh, thank you for the introduction, uh, Butch. I'm Ron Feldman with Ecological Solutions. Um, I've been working with uh, stormwater utilities here in Georgia for about eight years now, and I've probably worked on, I think, about 15 of the 50 that are out there. And what I tried to do um, in coming on board uh, working with Henry County was to bring some of those experiences from some of those other utilities around the state to see how we could incorporate or modify certain aspects of what we were doing here in Henry County. Uh, every utility is different and unique in its own way, uh, but I do believe that uh, Henry County has a very solid stormwater management program, and as we'll see here, the uh, program is well funded by the utility. Uh, any stormwater management program or stormwater utility uh, has some basic services that it provides. I've listed those here uh, on the uh, slide. Uh, obviously, drainage system maintenance capital projects are some of the critical and more uh, high cost elements of any stormwater program, but the regulatory aspect uh, is something that's ever changing. And uh, just uh, in the next few weeks, in the early next year, uh, the county and many other local governments in Georgia will uh, be issued a new stormwater permit for the next five years that will have new requirements, new regulations uh, in the ever changing arena that is regulatory compliance. And obviously, the long term goal of any stormwater program or regulatory compliance program is uh, addressing the water quality issues and, and, and flooding and drainage runoff issues that are part of any community. One of the issues we looked at um, as part of the project was how does the Henry County stormwater utility fee structure uh, compare to other county utilities here in Georgia, but then also other utilities of the same size in the case of the city of Roswell. And you can see that we, we compare favorably or, or competitively. Um, with regard to what we charge a typical residential uh, customer uh, here in Henry County for stormwater services uh, as we've outlined them on that previous slide. May I ask you a question? Sure. I know you did the comparisons. Um, did you compare that? Because stormwater has a lot to do with land mass, and Henry County is a particularly large county. Did you take that in consideration when you pulled the comparisons to look and see how our rates compared to those? Yeah, what we did was we, um, we normalized the uh, typical residential bill, which I believe is about 4,700 square feet here in, in Henry County, and we applied other communities' rate structure to our base billing unit or, or equivalent residential unit and, and came up with a comparison that was similar from uh, resident to resident in terms of what they would pay in each jurisdiction. And then as you look at those other utilities in terms of Rockdale, Clayton, um, Douglas County, they have a, a similar rural and urban uh, component in terms of how the land use is within the county. So we felt that uh, it compared favorably and, and uh, you know, obviously competitively by how these rates have played out. And the services are comparable as well. Uh, uh, very much so. Um, all the utilities provide different levels of service, and we're going to talk about that here in a moment. And one aspect of the Henry County utility that we've enhanced uh, or, or recommending to be enhanced is the amount of money that we put into capital improvements. And I'm going to show a slide on that here in a moment. Uh, we're going to talk about two terms, uh, extent of service and level of service. We'll start with extent of service. And, and simply, the extent of service policy 
really defines where the county will perform work and allocate its resources within the jurisdiction that provides stormwater services. So in the case of Henry County and most stormwater utilities, uh, the extent of service is basically uh, summarized in terms of county-owned property, county road right-of-way, and then where there's easements and rights of entries that have been secured by the local government uh, to allow access by uh, resources of the, of the stormwater program. The level of service uh, defines what type of activities. So extent of service is where, level of service is what. And what those types and frequency of operational activities amount to basically becomes the different activities and program elements uh, that a local government will undertake in terms of maintenance, um, capital projects, um, inspections, any of those, those aspects that uh, make up a program are defined within the level of service policy. And as I said, the level of service will change here in early 2013 as the new permit is issued for the county. Now, we, we talked about the extent of service. We talked about the level of service and the different activities of the program. And, of course, this is all uh, interconnected with the budgetary aspect of the utility. And this is really where the rubber meets the road. And what we've done is we've taken a look at some of the current issues that are related to the stormwater program and utility here in Henry County, and, and, and they're basically uh, focused on, on the bullets I have here in terms of working in the county road right away and the importance of developing a, a program and a uh, uh, supporting ordinance to provide financial and operational resources to deal with what is probably the most extensive aspect of the program, which is your drainage assets that are within the right-of-way, um, and, and developing a funding strategy such that the county can systematically and in a prioritized way address the right-of-way issues that are uh, critical with regard to drainage conveyance and, and the operational aspects of the drainage system. Um, what we've done then is we've, we've gone through and we've, we've tried to identify uh, what the extent of service definition needs to uh, be clarified to, uh, what type of funding resources are available uh, to support uh, additional work within the right-of-way, and then formulating a budget uh, over the next five years in which to accomplish that goal. So the EOS clarification, as I said, we're trying to uh, enhance uh, the work that we're doing within the county road right away and making sure that the stormwater utility can support that effort. And then uh, consultation with the county staff, specifically the county attorney's office, regarding uh, the existing ordinance uh, that has been on the books since, I believe, 2006, and then making any necessary modifications to that to clarify uh, that the uh, resources of the utility can be utilized to address this high priority need of capital projects within the right of way, making any necessary revisions, which I believe you are uh, going to have on your board agenda tomorrow, and then presenting that ordinance to you for review and consideration. So as we started to look at how we were going to fund the, the uh, enhancement of, of the capital projects uh, within the right of way, uh, we took a, a, a detailed look at the budget and um, it goes without saying in the information that I believe you all have already seen that the stormwater utility is, is a very healthy financial condition uh, in terms of the, uh, uh, the, the uh, resources and, and fund balance that are part of the utility uh, operating over the last five years. And what we tried to do was look at how we could utilize the existing fund balance uh, to go ahead and, and reinvest some of those funds within the drainage system uh, to, to address the uh, capital project and, and maintenance replacement needs that are a part of uh, the program that have been researched and identified by the county staff. So we've come up with a, a fund balance policy recommendation in terms of balancing uh, allocation of that current money with maintaining an adequate reserve so that if there is an emergency or a need to tap those funds, uh, that we've got a good balance of, of, of funding available uh, for that particular need if it were to arise in the future. Uh, we'll leave the fund balance details to the county staff and the uh, finance director's office to come up with. We provided our recommendations, and, and any questions that arise, we're ready to help. So as we've talked about allocating additional money to capital projects, we've, we've looked at um, increasing some of the expenditures when it came to uh, purchase of equipment and materials in which to accomplish that work, and then allocating money over the next five years really from two sources. 
uh, allocation of that additional or, or surplus fund balance that's available, but then also adjusting some of the revenue and expense projections that have been uh, we've looked at over the last several years, resulting in about a $400,000 increase in available funds. This does not involve any type of rate increase or things of that nature. It's simply a, a financial exercise in which we're utilizing our available money that uh, is really in savings um, uh, to go ahead and increase some of the work, but also to uh, reformat the budget a little bit in terms of its annual makeup so that we can get additional funds to the tune of about $410,000 per year dedicated to capital projects. So I think that it was a uh, uh, a beneficial and a productive exercise to really get into the budget and look at those issues and uh, to once again earmark or identify money for capital projects in the future. Uh, I had mentioned earlier I was going to get to a slide that talked about kind of how we compare with uh, some of the other stormwater utilities, once again county utilities and or utilities of a similar size and some of those names are familiar. Again, you can see that in the past about 20% of the annual budget uh, was dedicated towards capital construction, and we've recommended that that number uh, be increased uh, to more on the order of about 30 percent uh, because, number one, the need is there. Uh, the county staff has done an excellent job of identifying, identifying the need, uh, but also to get more in line with uh, what some of the other utilities are, are, are allocating or earmarking for capital projects in the future. The last issue, which was kind of ancillary to some of these, but I know it's important, and we've looked at it in other communities and, and tried to offer our recommendation uh, to what I know is uh, an issue that uh, we want to get uh, out in front of and, and deal with uh, in an effective manner here with the stormwater utility in Henry County, and that deals with private, private gated subdivisions and accessing those particular properties in which to perform uh, drainage system maintenance, detention pond maintenance, uh, things of that nature. And, and first and foremost, we believe that the ordinance, as it's currently written and to be amended uh, in your meeting tomorrow night, uh, potentially, uh, would allow for and it would be conducive to uh, performing work within private gated subdivisions provided, this is the key issue, provided that the necessary easements, rights of entry, and hold harmless agreements can be secured uh, and, 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 and executed between the county and the various entities that would be uh, seeking uh, this particular service to be done. And uh, it's something that has been uh, on the, on the, uh, the, the evaluation and, and to-do list for the county staff, and now we think we've come up with a, a mechanism in which we can, uh, once again, get the legal documents in place and then execute the drainage maintenance program uh, effectively within those areas uh, to service those customers. And I'll, I'll wrap up here with kind of the, the last slide, next steps, um, looking at the ordinance and, and making sure that uh, the Board of Commissioners is comfortable uh, with the edits that have been made in terms of accomplishing those goals of expanding that level of service and, and extend the service to work within the right-of-way and address those capital project needs, uh, work with the County Finance Department on a fund balance policy and a future budget amendment so as these different uh, financial uh, steps take place, uh, that that's all uh, documented and, and, and updated within the budget, and then once again developing a uh, standard procedure in which to go out, secure the necessary legal documents to access the uh, drainage system components within the gated subdivisions to then perform the maintenance measures that are needed. And that's all I have. Mm -hmm. Well, that was a great presentation. I know we have been talking about amending this ordinance. I believe, uh, Mr. Holder, you can correct me if I'm wrong, since about 2008. Would that be correct? Somewhere in that ballpark? Yeah. Yeah. But I uh, definitely needed to look at being able to address some of the culvert issues, especially in the county, those that go underneath the road that in our aging infrastructure. And, uh, of course, that is storm water. The new mandates that are going to be coming out, are those necessitating also an update or in, in our stormwater ordinance to be able to be in compliance with those new mandates? No, I, I, I've seen the, um, the new permit uh, that was going to be coming out for the county and other uh, communities that are similar in, uh, to Henry County. And I don't see any need to um, revise your ordinance. Once again, your internal uh, procedures and, and policies with regard to uh, 
what activities you're going to perform will need to be modified and, and how that's done internally by the staff I think remains to be seen uh, until the permit is issued I think within here in the next two or three weeks um, but I don't see any change in the stormwater utility ordinance beyond what you'll see in, the, in those uh, ordinance modifications tomorrow night I am glad to see that um, the gated communities are included in this. They do pay the stormwater fee, and um, the goal is to make sure that we don't have unnecessary things ending up in our reservoirs, but to actually comply with what the mandate is put in place to, to, to do, and that is to control stormwater runoff from all properties in the county, not, not just those outside of gated communities. Does any uh, board member have a question or comment? related to this presentation? Jay, I'd just like to make some comments, and, and that is when you mentioned 08, as far as amending the stormwater policies and basically what the responsibilities and duties were of, of stormwater, I want to go back a little further than that. And back to 04 and 05, the Water Authority brought to the Board of Commissioners the, the issue of stormwater. Stormwater was the last leg of the Clean Water Act of 1972. Am I not? If I've said you are wrong, correct, sir. Yes. If if I say something wrong, please correct. But that was the last leg. The Water Authority even paid for the first study. Then the county enjoined them, obviously, because uh, of the county as a whole. Legislation was was tried to be passed back in, and I have copies of it here today, of 03, 04, I mean, excuse me, 04 and 05. And we never could get the legislative delegation at that time to buy into, nor the board sitting here at the time, to buy into the fact that the Water Authority might need to have the responsibility of stormwater. That's a side issue. But my point is that history goes back that far. And in coming forward, once the stormwater actually was created and it was under the purview of the, the, the Board of Commissioners, ultimately it is anyhow, you can delegate that responsibility to, or that, to uh, authority to other people if you so desire. But in the 08, we started to recognize the fact you no, know, Terry McNichol with DOT. Uh, various issues started to arise as to, wait a minute, stormwater. We have culverts across roads. We have cross drains across roads. We have issues within gated communities that have, that contribute to the stormwater uh, problem, if you want to call it a problem. So we started to think about that back then, and, and my greatest concern, and I, I know I've, I've talked to Commissioner Bowman, other commissioners from the north end of the county, the infrastructure in the north end of the county is aging much more than in other places. Why? Because it, Henry County developed from the north to the south. And as those curbed and gutted subdivisions, which became a requirement in the mid-90s here in Henry County, those are starting to be 15 to some 20, some of them even more than 20 years old. So if some money is not set aside and some funds allocated for the replacement and the maintenance of those, that infrastructure, at some point in time, some board sitting here is going to be hit very hard. And am I correct or am I wrong? Yeah, um, the liability, financial liability of, of buried pipe systems on a local government is a tremendous... It's tremendous. It, 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 it will be. And that's going back to 08. And that is, that's right. When we started to see that and started to really get familiar with stormwater, uh, real familiar with it, may not be really familiar with it today, but becoming more educated on some of the things of stormwater, that's when we started to do that. In fact, we hired your firm on this back in, what, April? March? Yes, sir. March, April of this year. So it's not something that we've just immediately done or, uh, or have done within the last month or two. Okay. Any other questions or comments? If not, this will be on the uh, agenda for consideration tomorrow night, so I encourage you just to read through that. And if you have any questions before then, you could get with, um, with Butch or LaTanya or with Fred.
Thank you for your presentation. The next item on the agenda is under public safety. We have a resolution requesting authorization to expend funds from the seized drug money account for Command College. Our presenter is not Mark Ammerman. <laughs> no, Major Ammerman sends his apologies. He was unable to make it this morning. Um, I'm Matt Marlowe. I'm a lieutenant with the Criminal Investigations Division. Uh, what, the amendment is here to request authorization to use drug funds to send Lieutenant Robbie Savage to the Co Command College in Columbus. He's a 26-year veteran of the department. And as a part of the agreement, uh, he'll attend 10 modules over a period of two years in Columbus. The total cost is $14,200, $9,000 tuition, $3,450 for housing, and $1,750 for meals. Uh, he will also enter into an agreement uh, stating that at the end of this educational period, he'll stay with the department an additional three years. Uh, the chief would also like to go on record and advise he's never promoted anyone in the department based on education by itself, but he believes that the educational opportunities such as the academy and command college provide valuable training for the upper management by giving them the tools that we need to lead the department in the future. Do you know how many, uh, how many officers we have sent through Command College? I don't know the total number of officers. I do know that it's the policy of the department that they stagger and they, they only have two in session at a time because of the monetary constraints and, you know, making sure that we don't have too many supervisors that are out of pocket at the same time. Right. Uh, but I know that it's, we've had, it's been going on for the last six to seven years, if I'm not mistaken. And it's only, it's usually, it's been my understanding that it's uh, reserved for those who already hold their bachelor's degree. And at the end of this program, it gives them enough hours where they can obtain their master's degree as well. I just think it's great that we're able to educate uh, those within our department thanks to the generous contribution of our local drug dealers. And uh, I always like to note that. But I agree, ma'am. Does any board member have a question or comment pertaining to this item? If not, you have before your resolution authorizing the expenditure, and I'll entertain a motion. Move to motion by Mr. Stamey and a second by Mr. Holmes. All in favor? The motion carries 4 0. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Moving on to judicial, the first item is a resolution requesting authorization to accept a grant for the Adult Felony Drug Court. Our presenter is Kelly Bush, the Court Financial Administrator, Exhibit Number 3. Good morning. Good morning. Um, there, there's actually four, and they all kind of intermingle. The first one is for the Adult Felony Drug Court, and it is an award from the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council directly from the governor um, for $79,490. Uh, it got changed up a little this year from last year. This is an award that we received last year for drug court, an um, implementation grant for $75,000. The funds were smaller, and it, usually the way that it worked was the implementation grants were around $75,000, and then the operational grants dropped down to ten dollars to $15,000 going forward. The governor is a big proponent of accountability and problem-solving courts and set aside an additional $10 million this year to go to those. So um, the adult felony drug court this year received $79,400 and ninety dollars as an operational grant. One of the things, and the, the um, mental health court also received a grant, and the DUI court also received the grant, and one of the things that we had asked to do with this grant money is the drug court has a drug screen lab, which helps us offset our drug screen cost. We can, we can run a panel for about four dollars and eighty cents as opposed to, to fifteen dollars. But we want to hire a drug screen lab manager and a technician so that we can, we can offer our services outside of just the accountability courts and maybe make some money to, to support the accountability courts going forward. Um, so that was one of the things that we had asked for in this grant, and the, um, the funding agency gave one-third of those positions to the drug court and one-third of those positions to the mental health court. So that is, that is also in this package. Does any board member have a question or comment? You have before your resolution accepting a grant in the amount of $79,490 from the governor's office. 
Criminal Justice Coordinating Council, and I'll entertain a motion. Motion by Mr. Holder, second by Mr. Holmes. All in favor? Motion carries 4 0. The next item is a resolution requesting authorization to accept a grant for the resource court. That's exhibit number four. Same, same background. This grant is for $91,689. And something that I didn't say also is that this is just for three quarters of the year. So um, it be, became effective October the 1st. So this isn't even a whole year. This is just for three quarters of a the year. They're giving us $91,689 for our mental health court. Um, and it also would fund, trying to look to see exactly, it will fund um, a part-time case manager, a third of the drug lab manager, a third of a part-time lab tech, um, electronic tablets, which is something new. They usually wouldn't, wouldn't fund equipment, but they're, they're funding equipment this time for the, um, the mental health court team. Participant handbooks, drug screens, supplies, surveillance, home checks, emergency housing and medication, and um, designer drug screening. Does any board member have a question or comment? Mr. Bowman? Yeah, I was going to ask it on the previous one, but it would cover this one also. Is there any, uh, do we have any of our general fund, or we haven't do anything general fund with this at all? No, no matches? Or There's anything? no match. Okay. Thank you. That's all. Any other questions? <laughs> Not you have before you a resolution accepting the grant in the amount of $91,689, and I'll entertain a motion. Motion by Mr. Bowman. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Holder. All in favor? Motion carries 4-0. The next item is a resolution requesting authorization to accept a grant for the DUI misdemeanor drug court, and that's exhibit number five. This one is a little less. It's for $26,510. Um, and I've I truly believe that the reason is because this is a misdemeanor court and the people that it keeps out of jail are our, our county, keeps people out of our county jail. And the governor also, to kind of offset this, they made some changes through House Bill 1176 and they added um, driving under the influence, sale of alcohol to minors, and vehicular homicide when it involves alcohol to the charges that receive date funds, which is 50% of that original fine. So doing, I just did some calculations, and um, last year we had $400,957,000 in um, DUI charge collections. So being conservative, it started, you know, it started July 1st, so they've all got to go into place and we've got to start collecting it. But I conservatively believe that we will see at least an additional $80,000 in date funds this year and one hundred and fifty to 200000 going forward once it's all up and operating. Um, so the $26,000 for DUI court is a no, no match grant, but the next resolution is going to ask to spend eight funds to fill out the remainder of, of the cost to support that program. Does any board member have a question or comment? If not, you have before your resolution accepting the grant in the amount of $26,510. I'll entertain a motion. Motion by Mr. Holder, second by Mr. Bowman. All in favor? Motion carries 4-0. And the final item under judicial is the resolution requesting approval of the expenditure of the drug abuse treatment and education funds for the DUI drug court, exhibit number six. And this is the final one, um, and it is asking to, to um, spend not more than $60,000 to cover the additional third of the salary for the drug screen lab manager, a technician, um, additional surveillance, um, benefits and salary for the court coordinator in lieu of a case manager, an electronic tablet for the surveillance officer, and additional funding for drug screens. And just for um, means of clarification to our citizens, this is not coming from general fund. These are fees that are assessed on, on extra fines and fees assessed for these particular crimes that are committed that are set aside specifically to be used for these types of programs. Yes, ma'am. Are there any questions or comments pertaining to this item? Yes, Mr. Stamey? Mike, I don't know if this is a question for you or Kelly Williams, but remember we kind of capped where they could go, how low they could go. Is that balance still safe? We have, um, after taking into account the first quarter of this year's activity, we have $1,157,832. So we're still above the original balance that we had kind of made. 
And I, I said in the resolution that we would maintain that $1 million cap. And this will not take us into that new shape or form, correct? No, sir. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? No, Mr. Holder? I think it would be good for, I know we have three newly elected uh, people here this morning, as well as Judge Blunt is here in the audience, to explain, Kelly, and if the judge needs to or whatever, the real purpose in these special courts and what the intent and the intended purpose was in establishing these courts and what it does to the jail system and and repeat offenders. I, I think that the public should know, and I, I know that some of the newly elected people may need to know why. Why was there a million dollars set as a as a as a base uh, or the basement or the low point? The, the balance could never go below the million dollars, and we set it up that way so that you could not take everything out of the plan. I think it would might be good for Kelly to explain that because we've taken the action or about to <laughs> on the last one. But I think it would be good to, for the people to know and, and possibly the new, the new uh, elected officials. Well, problem-solving courts are proven to reduce recidivism, and that's taking people that, because of addiction, find themselves in our, in our correctional facilities, either state or county, and they just keep repeating the pattern. They go in, they do their time, they get out, they reoffend, they go back in. They go through our court systems, um, and it's just the belief that if, if you give them the counseling and you give them the help that they need, that they won't reoffend. That you can, I, I think our elevator speeches turn them from tax burdens into taxpayers. And I, I'm happy to share. I'm, I'm involved with the adult felony drug court, and we have um, we have currently 12 participants. Two are graduating in March. And these are usually heavy meth addicts that, that have been, been in jail most of their lives. They have children that are in our, our welfare system because they don't, they're not supported. And our two graduates, I'm proud to say, have um, one of them is a, is a female, and she's received her GED. She's received new teeth. She has reestablished a relationship with her daughter, her 16-year-old daughter. She has a house. She has a job. And it is her goal to go five years without a, a reoffense, and the Department of Pardon and Paroles will will pardon her and take away her felony conviction. And her goal is to be a kindergarten teacher. So um, that just always it's it's not just saving money for the taxpayers, but it's actually reuniting families and, and saving lives. Um, our DUI court has I just wrote this down. They have graduated 49 participants. They have only had two to reoffend. So that's a 96% success rate of people not getting out and immediately going back out there and, in their case, getting in a car drunk and in, endangering the lives of my mom, my daughter. So they, and they're, they're proven to work. In Henry County, they're fairly new. I think the DUI court has been in place for three years. Um, the adult felony drug court just just capped out their, their first year. And the mental health court, I think, has been in place a little longer, going right on four years. Um, but nationally, they, they just have really good there, there are some places that have had them in place for 20 years, and they show that, that they work. And all three of our courts follow the, the standard best, best practices that have been set for those successful courts. Kelly, do you know what it uh, costs per day to house um, a prisoner at our local jail? 40, 47 or $48 the last time a day. So that adds up very quickly if you incarcerate versus using an alternative treatment. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Any other questions or comments pertaining to this? If not, you have before you a resolution that's authorizing the expenditure of the date funds, and I'll entertain a motion. Motion by Mr. Bowman, second by Mr. Holder. All in favor? Mr. Holmes, are you in favor? Okay, motion carries 4-0. Thank, Thank you. you. Moving on to transit, we have a resolution requesting authorization to purchase furniture for the new transit office. 
Our presenter is David Williamson, Director of Transit, Exhibit Number 7. Good morning. Good morning, Chairman and Commissioners. <clears throat> I believe you're all aware that the new transit uh, building will be opened up for the dedication on December the 18th. We want to invite everyone to come, but we also are in need of some new uh, materials to equip the office um, over there. We did work with uh, two vendors on the state of Georgia contract vendor list uh, to look at new uh, furniture for the building. Um, right now, we don't even have enough furniture in our current building to seat all the staff for our staff meeting if we were all you know, needing to do that. Um, money is available in the uh, FTA grant. It is an 80-20 match. Impact Office Interiors is proposed uh, to equip the new facility at 32000 $429.30. That includes shipping and all setup and delivery. The local match of 20% is $6,485.86. Did you have a chance to look through the surplus furniture that Don Ash has in storage prior to um, determining what your needs would be for the new transit facility? We have been looking at, in some of the surplus, yes, ma'am, and we're going to use some of the stuff that we already have and continue to look through what may be available locally, yes, ma'am. Okay, because I know he did very well bringing all that furniture back from one of the federal buildings downtown and good quality furniture, so we yes, want to make sure that's put to use. Right. Any questions or comments from the board? Just, if, just a comment, right quick. David, uh, over the years, I just want to say thank you for <coughs> what you have done with, with the transit and uh, the way you've managed the dollars. And the, You've done the very best you could with what you had, and uh, I think if you look back in, in time, you see that as far as federal grants and um, the various grants that, that are needed to provide transportation, public transportation in the county, you've done a very good job, and I just want to tell you that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other questions or comments? If not, you have had before you a resolution authorizing the purchase of the furniture for the new transit office, and I'll entertain a motion. Motion by Mr. Bowman, second by Mr. Holder. All in favor? Motion carries 4-0. Thank, Thank you. you. Moving on to communications, the first item is a resolution requesting adoption of the policies and operational procedures and guidelines for Henry County's government access channel known as TV14. Our presenter is Julie Hoover Ernst, Director of Communications, Exhibit Number 8. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, this is what I would deem uh, more of a housekeeping issue. Uh, the majority of you sitting on the board uh, sat down with the county attorney and I several years ago and spoke about what you wanted, uh, how you wanted the TV14 to operate. And um, we worked out the policy and it just kind of slipped through the cracks that this was never formally adopted by the Board of Commissioners. But we, you know, had this discussion with you and it, it just... I realized it had never been formally adopted despite the fact that we had had these discussions and I wanted to bring it before you for formal adoption. Does any board member have a question or comment? And I assume you all had an opportunity to read through the full um, policy. We had a partial one last month, so thank you for getting us the completed one. If there are no questions or comments, you have before you a resolution pertaining to the policies and operating procedures and I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve by Mr. Holder, second by Mr. Bowman. All in favor? Motion carries 4 0. Thank you. The next item is a resolution requesting support of HR 1746, known as the Community Access Preservation CAP Act. And again, our presenter is Julie Hoover Ernst, and that's exhibit number nine. Good morning again, Commissioners. Um, as many of you may know, back in 2008, Georgia was one of many states that have passed state franchise agreements regarding cable companies and how they affect PEG channels, which is a public uh, education and government channel, which, of which um, Henry TV 14 is a government access channel. Um, these state franchise agreements have adversely affected a number of channels across the nation and many of them that had initially been receiving peg fees um, that were from the cable franchises um, that supported these channels um, are shutting down um, and that's what has brought uh, has really gotten the attention of a lot of uh, congressmen um, in Washington 
And while we were not one of the channels that ever received that, those kinds of supporting fees from the cable franchise companies, um, this new legislation would actually provide a source of revenue for Henry TV 14 if it passes um, that would help to augment the communications budget. Um, the CAP Act, um, which is H.R. 1746, as it now reads, um, would either restore the level of support that um, PEG channels once received, or it can receive up to 2% of the gross revenues that that operator receives in that county or city, um, so that it would provide um, a substantial revenue stream to help augment the communications budget. Um, and those new fees can be used for both operational and capital expenses. So it can be used to help support the part-time salaries that we've had to bring on board to help produce the programming, um, the original content that we are required under the state franchise agreement. So when I came across this, I wanted to bring it to your attention uh, to see if you would be willing to support this because of how it would help um, our budget situation here in Henry County and um, if, if it would be um, your desire to send a, a resolution in support of it to uh, Representative Westmoreland and uh, Representative Scott in Washington. One addition to that, we would have to, if the board decides to support this and request this from our congressman, is to add Paul Brown, who okay. is our District 10 congressman, under the new redistricting. Does any board member have a question or comment? It's not really a, a, an action per se that impacts. It's more of a letter of encouraging support from our congressman. If there are no questions or comments pertaining to this item, you have a resolution of support in front of you, and I will entertain a motion. Moved to approve. Motion by Mr. Stamey. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Holder. All in favor? Motion carries 4-0. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to public works, we have a resolution requesting award of a bid for recyclable materials. Our presenter is Terry McMichael, our public works division director, exhibit number 10. Good morning. Good morning, chairman, board members. Uh, Henry County Recycles Center continues to provide a free recycling program to the residents of Henry County. And after well over a year of business, the county has rebid the following recyclables to be purchased from the center. This proposal was processed through the purchasing department. Bid documents were posted on the county website, and the bid notice was listed in the ACCG GLAGA website. Six vendors submitted bids for the materials, and we have provided a spreadsheet to show those different uh, price comparisons. We would like, we propose that the awards would go as, as follows. Um, we propose to award to LB Recycling and Waste our scrap metal, aluminum cans, and uh, batteries such as automotive batteries. In this particular case, LB Recycling will be providing the containers if needed, uh, and they will haul the materials. So they'll place their containers at our site uh, and then pay us per, uh, well, on the scrap metal, they'll pay us per ton. Aluminum cans are per pound, per pound, and batteries, it's a per each. Uh, we propose to award to SB Recycling our number one, two, th and three through seven plastics, our office paper, and the combination of newspaper magazines and telephone books. Um, here, uh, we'll furnish the containers and haul the plastics to their site. So we'll be furnishing those three containers, and then SB will furnish the containers and haul the office paper and newspaper to their site. To Sunoco, we, we want to award our cardboard, and we'll continue to furnish the container and haul to their site. Um, and uh, on your executive summary, we have Waste Pro, but we do not want to award that, so if you'll scratch through that. Um, on motor oil, we, we want to continue using the vendor that we are currently using at uh, at Fleet, which I believe is Farmer Oil, so that will not be part of this resolution. So that uh, um, that will conclude all the recyclables that we would like to award, and I'd be happy to answer any of the questions. On um, the pricing of this is a little difficult, 
if uh, if there's some of that that y'all don't understand, I'd be happy to explain it because some of this is. If you're, I'm, I apologize. If you're just not in the business of it, it is confusing. Some of this is based on yellow sheets, which is a standard commodity sheet, and we get a certain percentage of that. The other one um, is an arm sheet, and when it says over and under, it's they have a normal price established. If you pay twenty, if the price is a hundred dollars, if it says twenty under, then we get paid twenty dollars under that. If it said $20 over, we'd got $20 over that. So in this case, people bid under, one was 20, one was 50. You want the one that's closest to it, so the least amount under. So I know some of that was a little bit confusing, and uh, but we have awarded, to, in essence, the higher bidder based on that. But if anybody's unclear on that, I'll be happy to go through any particular item if you have any questions. Terry, I was noticing too on the bottom that there were no bidders for glass, and I'm assuming we're still going to continue to accept glass at the recycling center. Absolutely. Um, on glass, um, there's basically one vendor in all of Atlanta that I know of, and it's strategic. They will accept the glass, but they will not bid. They will not give us a bid, but we'll continue using them and hauling our glass to them. Um, but we couldn't get a confirmation of price. I, they, I guess they know they're the only show in town, and they, we just can't get a, a year contract bid out of them. Now, you call them up and say, hey, we got a container of clear glass. They're going to say, I give you X amount of pound for it. They always take it, but they will not commit to an annual contract. We seem to get an exorbitant amount of glass when I take my recyclables um, Tremendous amount of beer bottles and wine bottles, I might add, are in the recycling bin. So I guess that's recycling that. And then there's the alcohol tax that we charge. So, And I'm sure with our DUI tickets, we get other benefits from that as well. But I'm, yeah. glad, I'm glad to know we're still recycling glass because there, there is a lot of it. I hate to think of that going to the landfill. We will. We'll still continue to take the clear, brown, and uh, green. green, and the brown does fill up faster. Mm -hmm. We're just glad you're recycling all those things. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> all right, any other questions or comments pertaining to this item? I have one question, and it will be less complex. Since we have started the recycling center, where do we stand? And Mike of Terry Wong might be there. Where do we stand? Have we made money? Have we lost money? The last report was we were a little bit in the black. So somebody can, I think I'll, we need to know that. I, I'll probably be the best to, to take that one. Last year, I think uh, we, our revenues exceeded our cost uh, by just a slight amount. Uh, we will do a little better than that last year. I mean, this coming year, I think probably a little better as more and more people know that we're there um, we're we've added a few other things that we collect I think um, by rebidding this and some of this um, we've cut out some of our middlemen in this bid so I think we'll make a little bit more uh, I think we'll make a little bit more this year uh, Based on that, you know, like glass right now, we have another vendor that he furnished the containers and they're hauling it to the glass company. With this, we'll use our containers and haul directly, so we'll make a little bit, we'll make a little bit more there. In the expenses, though, the amortization of, of equipment and all is part of the black, is that correct? Not, no. I, Is included as an expense in his expenses. Yes, it is included, but it's over ten years, so ten thousand dollars. Yeah, I understand that because it's, it's, it's equipment that can. It's, it's very small. But you are, <clears throat> but you are taking depreciation off of it. So okay, that, that was my point. Didn't want to say well we made money, but in essence we spent a quarter of a million dollars and we didn't get anything <laughs> back. No, that, that's my point. Well, there's some other side benefits that probably uh, the public doesn't know as well. There's a lot of occasions where. We will use our rollback uh, truck and our containers 
to assist other departments if, like if they have cleanup, uh, Mike Keeble's department will place a bin at a building or something if they're refurbishing and they'll put that in there and then we'll haul it to Clayton County. Um, so we do a lot of, that's kind of intangible that we really hadn't put a hard number on, but we do a lot of that type stuff as well. And we, we had that discussion when we talked about going to a, to a roll-off system. Rather than tying up a dump truck dry, a dump truck and a driver at a site where you're going to fill it full of debris anyhow, set the container out there. The driver can go and be doing other things and come back and pick up the container when it's full. Those are the things that can benefit and be of benefit to every department, really. So, okay. I think there's another very large benefit, and that's all the phone calls that I've received over the past year about how much better it is and how helpful the people that we have out there. I don't know who you have out there. I've actually never been to it. But uh, the people who talk about how helpful our people are and how, how well it's run and managed over and above what it was the first three or four years that I was in office where I got the other phone call where it was just totally the opposite. So I think benefit to the taxpayer if, you know, if we just got a break-even situation and, and we're providing that kind of service and it's helpful for them. It pays a lot of dividends for the county to do that. So. Let me inject this. Prior to, if it broke even prior to that, it was costing us $35,000 a year to hire the guy to give us all those bad phone calls. To give us the problems. Yeah. And he had those going up to $70,000, $80,000 when we made the decision to do it in house. He was exactly. going up. I might. He was, um, he was the low bidder. Right. And he was the low bidder. But and there were several bids. I think we had. It, you have done a phenomenal job with that because we do take our recyclables over there and it is clean, whereas before it was a total disaster, overflowing bins. You almost had to step through the recyclables to try to put yours in the bin. And, um, and then the fact, too, that when you get there, because the trustees are there, to assist, and they're right there to help you unload all your recyclables and take them to the different bins. It is night and day difference between what it was a few years ago, and I, I cannot say enough good things about that center. One other thing that the public probably may not be aware of that I think is very, very important out there is um, Beth and I have visited several other centers. As a matter of fact, we just came back from one last week. And majority of those centers, by far, I haven't found anybody yet that operates like we do. If you bring a refrigerator or anything with Freon in it at any other center that I know of, they charge you anywhere from 10 15 up to $20 to take that because they have to spend the time to remove or vacuum out the refrigerant in it. Uh, we've, of course, we, we tax Mr. Keeble again with coming to our site and doing that. So we do have some assistance, but we, do, we don't charge for taking appliances. It's another way to generate money, but we have, we felt like if we could continue operating the way we have without having to do that, you know, that's what we would do. So that's another thing that we're kind of a little bit unique from a lot of the other centers in that we don't charge for certain things that some other centers do. A lot of other centers charge for yard waste. If they bring in yard waste, they attach a fee with that if they do that. Um, one other thing that just for future kind of planning and looking ahead, there's a lot of things that we can continue to make improvements on uh, at the recycle center. Some of those will cost some money. We, we were looking at uh, the possibility there would be a huge saving is if we were able to bail those things. And a good example is plastics. A 40-yard container, 30-yard container of plastics will weigh about seven or 800 pounds is all you can get in it because it's just mostly air. Uh, by the time you haul that to a, a vendor, one truck loads 700 pounds, and I forgot what we get a pound, but it's very little. It's just barely a, a break even at that point with plastics. But if you bale that plastic, you, you can get about 1,000 pounds in a bale. So that whole 40-yard container would make one bale of plastic. Well, if you can get 24 bundles or so on a flatbed trailer for the same amount of fuel in trucking, you get 24 bales versus one, and, and that's what makes it almost a break-even is just trucking it over there. 
So we we have some plans coming up in the future to propose to y'all down the road of some uh, proposals that we think that will pay for itself in a very short time period, but will allow us to take on a lot more recyclables and and kind of upgrade our service and may in, uh, and tie it in overall with uh, with Mike and some countywide recycling efforts. So so there's there's more coming down the pike as soon as we can get all those plans together. Any other questions or comments on this item? If not, you have before you a resolution to award the bids for the recyclable materials. And I noticed in this resolution it is correct. It, had, it does not include Waste Pro in the resolution. So um, with that, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve by Mr. Holder. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Staney. All in favor? Motion carries 4-0. The next item is a resolution requesting award of a bid to purchase quarry aggregate, and that's exhibit number 11. Our DOT does require quarry aggregate for various county projects. Having an annual contract for this material allows quick access to the product without the necessity of bidding each time and each product that we need. And it guarantees the prices will remain firm for the contract period. This contract will replace the existing contract, which expired September 30, 2000. 12. Uh, we sent out bids. We had two responses. Um, we would like to award to Vulcan Material Company as the overall low bidder and recommend this award as a unit price contract with no fixed quantities and the prices will remain firm for the contract period. Be happy to answer any questions you may have on this. Does any board member have a question? Okay, if not, you have before you a resolution awarding the bid for the quarry aggregate to Vulcan with no fixed quantities, and I'll entertain a motion. Motion by Mr. Holder, second by Mr. Bowman. All in favor? Motion carries 4-0. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Board. Moving on to County Manager, we have a resolution regarding the implementation of an excise tax. Our presenter is Fred Alletta, our County Manager, Exhibit Number 12. Good morning. Morning, Chairman and Commissioners. The uh, State of Georgia will be eliminating the sales tax collections on energy used in the manufacturing process in the State of Georgia starting the first of the year. Uh, this is a process that will take four years at 25 percent per year being repealed or pulled back. First year, 25 percent in 2013, the 50 percent the next year, and 75 and so on until it's all 100 percent eliminated. When they did this, they, they not only um, pulled back the uh, sales tax that was at the state level of 4%, they did the same thing for the county taxes, which include our lost and splossed. Um, the 1% for the uh, Board of Education splossed will not be uh, uh, pulled back. Uh, the biggest problem, uh, whether it's us, every county, uh, is the same, and that is that there is no way to really know exactly the dollars the county will be losing. Um, I've done some uh, homework here that I'll present <clears throat> to try to answer best case how. Um, I spent this uh, weekend um, at uh, Commissioner Holmes' um, uh, fundraiser for his youth foundation, spoke with uh, uh, commissioners from um, Rockdale, Clayton, and DeKalb, um, Rockdale and DeKalb, basically said the same things everybody else. They don't know what they're going to do. Um, the, again, the key reason, they don't know what they're losing or gained from it, putting it back in. <clears throat> Clayton did, uh, in, a couple weeks ago, go ahead and put the tax, um, replacement tax, the excise tax in to replace it. Um, if the county, uh, if you so choose today to uh, impose this excise tax, again, which would be equal to what is um, coming off on the sales tax each year. Um, the cities, the four cities, uh, would have the ability to join in and receive a portion of that um, sales tax, uh, lost sales tax dollars. Uh, there would have to be an intergovernmental agreement to receive these funds. Um, also, we'd have to go ahead and uh, present an ordinance and uh, the intent is to the extent that you so choose to put this uh, tax in. Uh, again, it is not a new tax. It is by name, but it is not an additional tax on the uh, uh, manufacturers uh, in the uh, county or cities. 
Um, I, I, in your booklet, there's a, a write-up that I did back um, in the middle, middle of October. I've talked with ACCG to see if there's anything further on it. Uh, there's no additional information. But what we best we could uh, determine at this point, the um, three, just three of the power companies, the energy companies that um, I have in this study, which is not all of them, um, Georgia Power, Central Power, Central Georgia, EMC, and Snapping Shoals, uh, best to can, uh, come up with from each of them, the total tax that uh, the manufacturers in Henry County pay at the 7% rate is almost a million dollars, 959000 Of that, the state gets 548000 That's the 4%, and it will go away. Um, our 3% uh, for the splashed lost and the education splashed is $137,000 apiece. Uh, what we're talking about here today is the 2% lost and splashed at $137 apiece, or 274000 on an annual basis, and again, at uh, the present levels of 25%, that would equate to $68,501. But again, that's just based on uh, those three energy providers. Um, also in the uh, write-up I have is that ACCG did poll or asked and surveyed the various counties. Uh, they only have 73 of the 159 counties in the state responding to it uh, at the time they did it, and they have not gotten up an, another update. I spoke with them uh, last Friday, and they won't have another one till sometime in December. But um, 29 counties have already agreed or are going to implement the tax. Uh, 26 uh, have said no, and 18 do not know what they're going to do yet. Uh, I've tried to indicate those counties, and if you'll do, take a look at the map that uh, is attached, um, the yellow counties. Um, this will work. I can blow that up a little. Um, you can see the. Uh, here's Henry. And you can see most of the counties surrounding us are in yellow, which is an uncertain at this point that uh, they had not made a decision. Um, Clayton right here is in yellow, but as I said recently, uh, did go ahead and um, uh, put in the uh, tax. Um, you can see the green as well, uh, which are uh, yeses, and uh, the uh, grays are the noes. Um, one of the items in here I mentioned is that Butts, um, Butts is indicated as a yes. Uh, correspondence between the uh, 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 email chain that I've received, uh, Butts, although it's indicated as a yes, uh, their last word I've got was that there was some concern that they may not implement it, uh, but the city of Jackson does want to keep it. Uh, in though. So between the city of Jackson within Butts, uh, don't know what the outcome is, is going to be. Uh, haven't had any additional update. Um, yes? Has there, has there been any feedback from these uh, energy companies? And if so, um, do you think this will have the ability or the potential to, um, to hurt us with business here in this county? I think the, if you go to the write up, as far as hurting us goes, um, this tax, this, this excise tax, if you put the excise tax in, you can pull it out at any time. So to the extent the county has an opportunity or the public um, opinion, if you would, of the manufacturers as such that it's a concern, you can drop the tax at any time. Um, there's a bunch of numbers, but just to try to show something. This was the, as I indicated in the write-up, uh, Central Georgia EMC uh, gave us five companies of what they were paying in sales tax that uh, they could identify as senior county manufacturers. They didn't give names. They just indicated these are the manuf uh, five manufacturers <clears throat> in what they pay. The total in, in uh, one company or two, three, four, and five, as you can see, the annual cost, under, again, just for Central Georgia uh, EMC, um, these five companies paid annually 
96000 or about $8,000 a month. Uh, the state uh, portion of that uh, 96 was 55000 and again, you can see the varying amounts from as low as 5800 up to as high as 12000 and by month, again, same thing. Locally, the local tax is um, 41 of the 96. Uh, monthly, that's 3400 and you can see that's as little as uh, $367 up to 1228 um, And then breaking that down by the 2% and 1%, um, the 1% again being the BOE, which um, SPLOS, which would continue to stay in place. This is the piece here that we're talking about, at least for these people, that the county would be putting back in place. Again, for the first year, it's only 25%. So at that uh, figure, you know, at the highest figure, you're talking $200 um, a month um, is what we would be losing or putting back in place in year one at the 25% of the $800. Um, and again, the next year it would be 50% that the, the um, energy providers would be not collecting uh, unless we did have, um, did put the tax back, put the sales, put the excise tax in to replace the lost sales tax. Fred, can you put, mind putting that um, diagram back up, please? On the uh, map? Yeah, the map that showed the counties that yes and no's? Yes. I can't see it from here. What is Jackson? Jackson County, not Jackson, Georgia. What is Jackson I County? I believe Jackson's a no. No. There are no? There are no. All right. What about uh, Newton County? Newton is a no. Newton on the map is a, a do not know. They did not respond. I have some emails and correspondence of um, various counties and discussion and dialogue back and forth, and Newton is saying they probably will not. They have not affirmatively, unless recently, and I haven't seen it, uh, said no or yes. Okay, what about Savannah and around the ports? I've got to tell you the truth. Uh, well, But they don't really depend as heavily on. I didn't. I didn't concentrate on. Quite frankly, outside of the. I just landed a big banner, sir. I didn't concentrate. Quite frankly, outside of our more competitive area, and um, let's see, that's that county is. Uh, is that Richmond? Chatham. Chapman. I'm sorry. Okay. It says yes. Chatham says yes. Yeah, you got it in your book. Can't read through this, but. Yeah, Chatham, there it is down here, yes. right here, sorry, I didn't think it was that far. Chatham right here is green, which is yes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. What's interesting is that the green along here is along the, um, where there are green, which is yes, um, are uh, along the uh, border of uh, Carolinas. and all the others that's got all the heavy industry there, they certainly don't want to do anything yeah. about it. There it is, right there along the Savannah River. <laughs> One of the uh, considerations that um, I'll offer uh, is this, that I've, I've been to, and Mike joined me in uh, on these meetings as well, where discussions of various items, uh, county items, state items have been discussed and upcoming legislation and so on. This subject has come up at each of the last three meetings I've attended. One of them was very brief, didn't even say much. The other two that spoke of it didn't offer any Thing more than to tell everybody we don't know what to tell you other than the best thing is to, to implement it and see what happens. Um, along those lines, the, the, again, the data that I hear is not all the energy providers. Uh, one thing I did ask uh, at one of the meetings because it wasn't uh, clarified was that what are you going? What are we going? They going to do the energy providers for the office space, which is obviously not directly involved in the manufacturing process. And the answer is it covers all energy that they get. They're not going to split it out. So it will be exempt. And um, uh, the only thing is that if it's a, the headquarters is in another place or doesn't do the manufacturing process, they will pay the tax. Uh, it's not by the uh, sick code, if you would, of the uh, company. It's just to the location that does manufacture it. And it is all energy consumed in the uh, buildings, be it office or out in the plant. Um, one, one thought, again, this, this tax can be uh, uh, repealed. 
Um, my thought was if we put it in for six months, there's not a lot of money that um, is going to be imposed back at 25 percent during, say, six-month period. We can go ahead and get with every energy provider, provide our certificates to them to collect it. We would be getting monthly checks during the first six months. We would add them up, determine what that is, multiply times two, hoping seasonality is not a factor in the first six months versus the last six months. And from that, at least, we could then take that times four because it's only going to be 25 percent. And that then would allow us to determine what it's going to cost us in four years when it's 100 percent uh, removed. Um, again, the option is there at any time to um, repeal the ordinance and um, do away with it. But at least if there's something that's put in place for the first, um, say, six months of next year, we'd have that history, the, the dollar figures to take a look at and study. It also is going to be at the lowest amount of loss that our existing um, manufacturers would lose because it's only the 25 percent that's coming out, not the full amount. So it's a uh, situation of, again, evaluating it the only way you can, which is to find out how much is it that we're, that we're presently collecting and won't be collecting. And the only way to do that is to have these checks come directly to us to understand and, and calculate that figure. Without it, we're just in the dark as we are right now. The, um, the wrestling with this park comes in with trying to assure that Henry County continues to remain competitive when it comes to attracting industry. Correct. And, um, you know, the, it's not just the energy tax that has to be factored into that. You have to also look at the fact Henry County has, has a, a great advantage over some other locations because we do have I-75 which Spalding County does not have. Um, we are in close proximity to the airport. We're on the, um, the port side of the airport. We have rail accessibility to move freight in and out of the county. Um, so we, we do have some other things that you can't really compare to other counties throughout the state that also make us competitive for attracting industry. But it would be, it, you have to factor all of those in, not just yes or no to the energy tax. And th that is the difficulty every commissioner uh, or county manager I've talked to is just that. And the same as the discussion we had last time I presented this was just that. Are we going to put ourselves in an uncompetitive situation? Um, and the only thing you can do is I think everybody, not a, most, some of the counties still are, while they're in uncertain, not knowing what they're going to do, I think everybody's watching to see what everybody else is going to do. If somebody puts it in, they can put it in, either uh, remain just as competitive or not put it in and hope to be a more competitive. So it is definitely going to be something I think uh, the, the economic develop, development people will put on their charts of do you have it or don't you have it. So it could become a negative. Uh, again, I'm just offering from the standpoint of trying to quantify something that can't be quantified. That is the only way to do it. And then, as I said, take it back after we've got calculations to determine. Or um, we just don't put it in. And as our sales tax come in, the difficulty will be we won't know if the reduction in sales tax is because of less sales uh, for the holidays uh, next year or over the summer or whatever else, or if they go up, we won't know if it's because we have more sales or more retailers um, providing sales tax income. So we're going to be flipping a coin trying to understand which it is and what the effect this, of this is. If we don't, uh, if we don't support this today, uh, could we turn around and implement it based on the other counties uh, moving forward with it um, sometime next year? My understanding is yes. You don't have to put it in. You can do it at any time you want. Um, uh, if you're going to imp implement it to, to be effective the first of um, the year to, to keep it in place, uh, we really need to have uh, the county approve today that. And then the next step is to tell the cities uh, if you do so they can have an intergovernmental agreement to join in and come back on the fourth with an intergovernmental agreement, an ordinance, and then we can put the word out to the various state and out-of-state uh, energy companies. At the same time, if you so choose not to want to do it, we still would advise the cities or the county is not going to do it, and they can go ahead and do it on their own. Mr. Stanley, you had a question? Well, you might better answer this question for me, but um, I'm looking at Houston County as a, as a yes, and probably the 
probably one of the largest employers in the state is based in Houston County, being the base. Is the base already exempt because it's government owned? We're talking about manufacturing. I know, but they're, they manufacture. Yeah, there's manufacturing that, that, that uh, surrounds that base, that'll support to see that thing really get ready to the base down, too, though. Uh, go to Burke County, where um, the nuclear power plant is, Plant Vogel. They say no. Uh, you know. What about Columbia County, too? I don't know if Columbia's an up-and-coming county. I mean, you know, and it is. Here's something that, and I can't answer the question, Randy, about the government, because I know there's a lot of manufacturing going on on the base, but there are also a lot of ancillary support people that are around it. One thing we haven't seen here, we looked at electric providers, Georgia Natural Gas is not in there. And I'm going to use Briggs and Stratton Snapper as an example. All of their paint system and their, all of that is fired by natural gas. And I'm assuming southern states were the foundry. It's not going to be fired by electricity. It's going to be fired by gas. Tommy, I know you're familiar with some of that. They're, they're both. They are both. And it's about have, equal. I spoke about They have them. both. Everybody. But my, okay. But when we said it was going to cost us $274,000, that doesn't necessarily mean that's what it is because with all right, it also says artificial gas. What if uh, uh, the propane people are out here? That's considered an artificial gas. Uh, and they're providing some sort of manufacturing. You see some very large propane tanks in this county that where natural gas is not available that people are using. So Smead Manufacturing is one at one time, just as an example. So it, it is truly an unknown. It's a double-edged sword. You don't want to make yourself non-competitive, but at the same time, you don't know how much revenue you're giving up. And I think, Fred, you made a good point in the fact that does 25% in the first year keep someone from coming to Henry County because that's all the 75% of the tax is going away. The 25% would remain, correct? Two percent. That seventy-five percent remains Two. next year. Twenty-five percent goes away. Yeah. Just the opposite. Uh, the opposite. Okay. It's, it's, so it's a, it's a very the, the, the smallest portion, portion next but the year. The state's portion goes away. away. Uh, they're they're actually doing the same thing at the twenty-five percent as well, and they're four percent. Okay, twenty-five, fifty. Okay. Um, it could, but. Uh, you're playing with an unknown, and I think it's probably a pretty good solution to, to implement it. If we were in negotiations. And if you, and if you see that it's going to cost you, well, you know, one, one major business could eliminate the taxes that you're getting in, 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 in this, uh, the sales tax that you're getting from the power companies. You know, somebody mentioned an, uh, also about what position did the power companies take. That's a pass through. It doesn't matter to them whether they are they are sending it on to Henry County or not collecting it at all. So it's it's a pass through to them. Commissioner, commissioners, I just want to reiterate that yes, we are implementing an excise tax, but this is nothing more than a continuation of a tax that they have been paying as long as they've been exactly. paying. It's so it's not a new tax at all. It's just continuing to pay our two cent versus what's going to go away with the four cent from the state. So they're still in a better shape than they were, you know, before this happened. And again, if you, the write up that I've, I've done, uh, I did speak with what I thought were five of the, what I felt would be more the energy using uh, industries, uh, companies in the, uh, in Henry County, uh, southern states you mentioned, inline plastics, because plastics usually is a pretty big user of energy, Ken's Foods, which is rather large. Smead Manufacturing, you mentioned, and Atlas Roofing. And uh, Atlas probably, in my opinion, is probably one of the larger users of uh, energy, not only for electricity, but uh, gas, natural gas as well. They are 24-7 uh, use. They have to keep everything warm 24-7 uh, for their products. So they are, uh, again, that consumer of it. Um, in speaking with each of the manufacturers, they are very happy to get the reduction and would love to see it all go away, but I didn't get any one of them telling me, uh, in my fact, words said from some of them was, well, we're not going to go anywhere because of if it did stay in, and a recognition on their part, the county, not knowing how many dollars has to run the county, provide services, and 
Quite frankly, if it was a big chunk of change that was coming out of our budget because of it, the concern, they said, is what, how are you going to replace it? So not that they want to stroke a check or continue to be in that status. That's, again, our existing. But, again, to be competitive with new, um, the opportunity, if we knew there was a manufacturer that was would look at Henry County, you still have the opportunity to, at that time, uh, repeal it and uh, move on. Um, and, again, that's I, I, the only thing I'm mentioning is only reason I'm mentioning uh, a six-month period is to get some numbers that we can't get a handle on. Um, otherwise, like I said, we're guessing if we don't put it in place how much we've lost because you won't be able to know if it does go down, if it's all because of that or loss of sales uh, during the uh, future months and years. And likewise, if it goes up, you don't know if it's because of uh, something else or what the amount is. It's not an easy decision. It's, um, it is economic development, and you want to have that competitive advantage, and I'd love to have it. At the same time, I'd love to be able to tell you what nobody can tell anybody, how much is this going to cost the county if you don't do it. And again, next year at only 25 percent, um, you're not, if you would, putting back on the table a lot because they still are paying the 75 percent of it. Any other questions or comments? Mr. Bowman? Obviously, it's a gamble. Uh, and none of us have a crystal ball. We can't tell what business is looking in Henry County manufacturing or otherwise that might, uh, might be able to benefit from having this tool for the, uh, you know, for our development authority. Uh, being on board for the first 25% is not, uh, it's not, it, 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 we do have an out. I mean, if it doesn't work, we can rescind it or? They just repeal the ordinance, I guess. Just repeal it. Hey, Madam Chair, repeal. I'm sorry, Commissioner Bowen. I, I would be remiss if I didn't also add in that the law allows the state economic director to waive for any business that seeks a waiver, even from the local taxes, the, that individual can waive, do a complete waiver. I don't know what those parameters are. I think they were still developing what those standards would be. But there is an out for, I guess, an industry or a, a, a company that meets certain criteria that um, would allow it to be exempt. So that's just for your own edification. I think that's important to stay I, I think that the largest businesses that we've had not uh, come to Henry but to come to the state, the Baxter, obviously, and Caterpillar, these things didn't affect them in any way. They came anyhow. So it's I'm just a, it's kind of hard to uh, write a blank check and say, you know, we'll, we'll figure it out later. And again, to that extent, I do make a notation here in this write-up that Clark uh, County and Spalding County are a no, uh, as opposed to waiting and thinking. But again, both of them have been recipients of uh, jobs and, and investment in their counties uh, recently from uh, Caterpillar, and I'm sure that was a heavy consideration. The other, is, as you mentioned, was uh, Newton, and Newton uh, is not a yes or a no. They didn't reply, but in recent emails I've gotten, uh, on the subject from various counties, they've indicated, quote, they're opted to revisit the topic at a later date. So they're basically a no, but they're, they're not uh, done with, if you would, looking at it, but they may be. Same thing when I talked with the people Rockdale Saturday night and, well, Rockdale and Newton was the other one, uh, or DeCab was the other one Saturday night. And again, they're, they just don't know what to do. And I did speak with um, some commissioners at one of this meeting, one of the meetings I mentioned earlier, from um, uh, Gwinnett, uh, no Cobb, excuse me, Cobb, and uh, they again are throwing their hands up and going, don't know what to do, just like everybody else, just like the discussion here. Do you take a chance? You may not get somebody, um, they, you know, an opportunity to bring them to the county and try to bring that manufacturer here, or do you stand to lose substantial dollars that your budget needs? So it's. It's a, it's I know Mr. Holder saw that look on your face after the county attorney made her comment that the state has the right to overrule home rule in a situation where they deem it appropriate to do so as it applies to, to this 
energy use tax. I think that's quite quite interesting. I think it is too, and, and, and that's one of the questions I've had about what they eliminated, what they left in place in uh, in the taxes as far as eliminating some and keeping some. But if they determine that uh, a business has the economic significance to warrant them bringing them here, and they are exempt from the taxes. Now, what position does that put other manufacturers in that are in the same business? So they will be exempt right along, correct? So they have a right to just basically say Henry County or any county. Don't say Henry. Just say any county. You don't, have, you don't really have enough sense to run your own business. We're going to tell you how to do it and tell you who can be exempt and who's not. That, to me, sends an extremely bad message from our legislative delegation, and I think we have one of the best we've had in a long time. But I totally disagree with what they're doing. Any other questions or comments on this? If not, you have before you a resolution, and you have the option of imposing or implementing the excise tax on energy used in manufacturing or not implementing the excise tax on energy used, and I will look to a board member to make a motion on this item. Madam Chair, I make a motion we, we not implement the tax. All right, we have a motion to not implement the excise tax. Is there a second to that motion? Okay, we have a second by Mr. Bowman. All in favor of not implementing the excise tax, please raise your hand. And all opposed. Motion carries with Holmes, Stamey, and Bowman in favor of not implementing and Commissioner Holder in opposition. I'll note, we'll notify the city of your decision. Thank you. Thank you. We had no one sign up for public comment. Ms. County Attorney, anything for public session? No, ma'am. Mr. County Manager, anything for public session? No, ma'am. Upcoming meetings and events tomorrow, November 20th at 6 30 p.m., we have a regular meeting. Thursday, November 22nd, and Friday, November 23rd, all county offices will be closed in observance of the Thanksgiving holiday. Monday, December 3rd at 9 a.m., we have a workshop meeting. Tuesday, December 4th at 9 a.m., a regular meeting. Monday, December 17th at 9 a.m., we have a regular meeting, and there will not be a meeting on Tuesday, December 18th. At this time, I need a motion to convene into executive session for the purposes of potential pending litigation, personnel, and or land acquisition matters. Motion by Mr. Holmes. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Stamey. All in favor? Motion carries 4-0. I need a motion to reconvene into public session. Motion by Mr. Holmes second. and a second by Mr. Stamey. All in favor? Motion carries 4-0. At this time, we need to amend the agenda out of public necessity and add an item for consideration. Mr. Holder? All right. And second? Second. Second by Mr. Stamey. All in favor? Motion carries 4-0. And Commissioner Holder, I'll turn it over to you for this item. I have two items, Madam Chair. One's a resolution to authorize the acquisition of 0.3447 acres of right of way, more or less, and 0.096 acres of permanent easement, more or less, and 0.076 acres of temporary easement, more or less, and 0.013 acres of driveway easement, more or less, in land lot 243 of the 8th District of Henry County, more Easily identified is uh, Henry County Parcel ID number 170-01007003, and the physical address of the property is located at 2140 New Hope Road, Locust Grove, Georgia, and this is for the purpose of, of uh, the pavement paving of New Hope Road. All right. We have a motion on the floor for approval of that acquisition by Commissioner Holder. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Holmes. All in favor? Motion carries 4-0. Madam Chair, the next one is a resolution to authorize the acquisition of 0 0.1553 acres of right-of-way, more or less, 
in point zero two four acres of permanent easement, more or less, and point one four five acres of temporary easement, more or less, in land lot two forty three of the eighth district of Henry County, Georgia. That does not have a physical address, but the parcel I because there's nothing on it, it's raw land, but the parcel ID number is one seven zero dash zero one zero zero seven zero zero two it's vacant land right and that is for the purpose of a of the pavement uh, and the widening of new hope road all right we have a motion authorizing the condemnation yeah it, that's right it would be all right we have a motion on the floor to approve that by commissioner holder is there a second second by commissioner bowman all in favor Motion carries 4-0. Is there any further business to come before this board? Oh, thank you. I need a motion to approve the executive session affidavit and resolution. So moved. Motion by Mr. Stamey, second by Mr. Holder. All in favor? Motion carries 4-0. If there's no further business to come before the board, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion by Mr. Holmes, second by Mr. Stamey. All in favor? Motion carries 4-0. We stand adjourned.